Hi guys, right, so uh, we thought we'd actually better get around and upload some material for the Design Spark competition. So, you know, better late than never and all that. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what we've actually got at the moment, we've actually just about got our circuit built up, it's now working. <sighs> and it's been a blooming long night to get it working. And what's the time? About 4 o'clock in the morning, is it? It's time? gone 4 o'clock in the morning now. <laughs> long day. Yeah, really long. I don't know how the hell we've got through this. Now. Well, I can tell you, Dave, it's quite simple. Plenty of bottles of our friends at Pepsi Max. <laughs> And our friends at Domino's Pizza. How many Domino's? How many did you have, Dave? Yeah, yeah one Domino's, two Domino's. Yeah. Another Domino's. It's been a long night. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> right, so, well, the actual circuit, what we've built, we've built what we call, or what everyone likes to call, a maximum PowerPoint tracking circuit. It sounds pretty smart, so Ian, Ian run us through that. Basically, this can apply to a range of renewable input applications such as thermoelectric generators, inductive power transfer systems and photovoltaic panels. And what it does is it uses a digital control algorithm to perform impedance matching of the input application, a renewable application, to the rest of the circuit which includes your uh, load that you attach to it. So the good thing is that you're going to get the maximum amount of power delivered into the load uh, under any condition using this. Exactly. So that's the advantage of actually maxing the impedance, isn't it? Exactly. And cur the, currently, there's no other research out there at the moment that's using a boost converter in discontinuous mode without using any current sensors, so solely just using voltage sensors, and allowing for output load and voltage variation. So Dave, what's the advantage of removing the current sensors? Well the great thing is, traditionally, current sensors, broadly speaking, you've got about two types of current sensor. So you've got the Hall effect type. Now these are basically, they're, they're lovely because they have no effect on, the, or almost no effect on the circuit. You basically stick your wire through, you read off the current. In fact, we're actually using one for characterising the circuit. So it's that kind of thing, you may well have seen them before. Downside, they're really quite expensive, especially when you come into actually getting a circuit board into production. The other main alternative is using a shunt resistor, so that's bunging a resistor in series with the path and then measuring the voltage drop across it. Now the problem is if you put this in the negative supply line, depending on how much uh, current you put through, you get what's called ground bounce. So this is where the zero voltage uh, point of your circuit actually moves up and down with voltage. So it varies with the current at a complete pain. Or you can put it in the positive supply line, that means you've got difficulty actually reading the voltage across it. You've got con mode rejection problems, and there are ICs available to actually try and get around this, but it's a complicated problem, and just taking out it taking it out altogether is much easier just doing voltage sensing. Exactly. Now, obviously with just voltage sensing, this is gonna cause a little bit of the problem when you actually come to work out the control algorithm for the duty ratio which because now you only want voltage terms in the equations for the duty ratio and you want to ignore all the current terms and you also want to include the internal resistance of your renewable input application so this is where the trickiness comes with uh, working out this algorithm uh, working out this derivation for yeah. the proof of the duty ratio equation for this application and this is really where the novel novelty comes yeah and then being able to put that into production because so once you've got your duty ratio equation, you can then use that to derive a design equation to work out the uh, maximum value of the inductance, which was what we've used here. Yeah. So running through you through with the circuit we've currently got, and let's actually just drag this out a bit while we're here. So what we've got, we've got our main printed circuit board here. Uh, hopefully you can see that. So this is actually fully designed in Design Spark. Great bit of software actually. So what we've got, we've got a 1 ohm resistor which approximates our uh, source resistance. This is like the internal resistance of your um, thermoelectric generator yeah. or whatever. This is a bog standard boost circuit. We've got our input capacitor here, doing our filtering. We've got the inductor here, we've got a Schottky diode, we've got a MOSFET, we've got a driving circuit for the MOSFET, and we've got our output capacitor, and then we've got, obviously got our huge uh, 
load resistors as well, high power load resistors representing our load. So we're using some resistors like this just so we can take resistors in and out of circuit. That means we can put a variable load on it for testing. And then we've got our filtering capacitors and our potential dividers for our scaling down our input and output voltages which we then read into our into our chip kit. Exactly. So this this one we just knocked up on variable for the moment. Yeah, it takes all the, takes all the control signals from the chip kit, puts it into the main board, takes all the uh, voltages back out of the main board and puts it into the chip kit. So we've got scaling, filtering on there. Like I say, we've got optocouplers for actually uh, op, um, removing... Providing isolation so that we don't Thank you. <laughs> cause any damage to the chip kit. Don't worry, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> now, chip kit. Oh. the chip kit max. How good is this, Dave? It's, oh, the amount of speed at which we managed to get the code running in this is absolutely fantastic. Phenomenal. And for our thing, we've got an enormous lookup table for all our values in here. And we've just got so much memory in here. We actually started off with the Arduino with this. The we chip just... the chip kit beats the Arduino, Dave, hands down. How much, come on, look how much onboard RAM we've got. Uh, and that's the big thing for us. We just managed to put the whole thing in RAM. And we can do like um, put loads of actual maths in real time running on the chip kit because it's running so much faster than the Arduino so it's oh. fantastic bit and the fact that all the libraries are there makes the development so quick exactly so shall we um, run through actually do it then I think that's a good idea Dave. so what we're going to do I'll move the camera around in a second but what we're going to do we're going to put some voltage into this circuit on the oscilloscope stream we're going to show you the voltage in and the voltage out and if we change the voltage in you'll notice uh, yeah, the supply voltage, you'll notice the uh, voltage actually at the boost converter always changes to um, half the supply voltage and that shows you that it's getting the most possible power out of it. And there's performing maximum power tracking. And another great thing that we can do obviously with the chip kit is via the USB connection here, we can actually monitor using the external serial monitor, we can ma monitor what values of input and output voltage we're actually getting read, the values yeah. for our lookup table. Uh, that's actually getting read and the output duty ratio that it's feeding in, which is fantastic. And we're going to get those via the um, display in a bit, aren't we? We are. Where's our display? It's uh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to hook that up to the chip kit, get that all running, so it's nice little, you know, you've got integrated debugging, all of that. Anyway, we'll set this up and uh, show you it running. So if you watch the yellow trace there, V supply, so that's what's going in. You've got the V input, so that's what's actually going into the boost circuit. And if you notice, uh, they're on half the uh, input to the boost circuit on half the scale of the V supply. So as you notice, they just track each other exactly. That's actually the circuit working and actually doing its maximum power point tracking there. So we're about all done here now, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've had fun, even though it is 4 a.m. Oh. Yeah, we're going to get some more information up. Um, have a look at, we've got a blog up at the Design Spark Competition website. We're also going to put some updates up on whatcircuit.com. There should be a link on the bottom of the YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, link on the bottom of the site. And, uh, well, thanks for watching. Yeah, good night. Cheers.